That's wonderful. Thank you, buddy. Great reading, Jack. Good morning, everybody. Good to see everybody here this Lord's Day, and uh, especially to uh, have faces that I either haven't met yet or haven't seen in a while. And it's uh, just like Brian said on the Lord's uh, table there, uh, you are honored guests. You are not just visitors to us. And so we hope that you keep coming back and to be with us, to to worship God, to fellowship. It's just wonderful to see every single face here uh, this Lord's Day. One of my favorite books is uh, called The Fred Factor. It was written as a New York Times bestseller, written by uh, a man named Mark Sanborn. And Fred is a real uh, character, real person. He, he's a mailman in Denver, uh, Colorado, and, uh, and he, he uh, stands out among all other mail carriers. Why? Well, because he did what most other ones are not unwilling to do. He sacrificed his time and he went beyond the call to go and to serve others. He did extraordinary things that, that was not in, it's not in the job description as a postal uh, service carrier. Mark Sandburn actually met him by uh, moving into his neighborhood, and uh, Fred came and he knocked on his door, and, and um, he asked him, he first introduced himself, I'm Fred, and, and then he asked him what he did for a living. He struck up a conversation, and then Mark told him that he's, a um, speaker, he's a mo- like a motivational speaker. He goes around the country and, and he uh, speaks to people. And so Fred said, well, you know, how often do you, do you leave? And he goes, I'm, I'm gone over 150 days a year. So Fred had said, well, how about this? When you are gone, why don't I just keep your mail? And then when you get back each time, he first got his, he got his um, schedule. That's what he asked him for. He asked him for a schedule. So he could see what days he would be gone. And then he says, when you're gone during these days, I'll just keep your mail. And then when you get back, I will bring your mail to you. And, and you know, Mark uh, Sanborn was, was astonished by that. He, you know, he never had anybody um, ask him how to serve him in, in, such, in such a way. Well, he also uh, noticed when he was uh, delivering his mail... Uh, he noticed that there was a package uh, from, uh, I, I believe it was UPS, on his porch. So he took that package and he, he hid it on the porch and made sure nobody could walk up there and see that package and take that. How many people actually do this type of service in their jobs? You know, he was an extraordinary man in what he did and how he served people. The message of the Fred Factor has principles that we can apply in our Christianity. If you want to read that book, you won't be able to put it down. I could not put it down. I finished that book in just two to three days. I just kept reading, kept reading, and it's a remarkable book also. First of all, these principles, you think about number one, everyone makes a difference. See, and it's up to you uh, to do your job in an extraordinary way. As Christians, we could go way beyond and to to, um, do what we need to do as Christians and to serve. Number two, success is built on relationships. Number three, continually create a value in others. You're going to create value in others, you're absolutely going to create value in yourselves. Number four, to reinvent yourself on a regular basis. This is Jesus. This is Jesus all the way, and this is what Jesus expects of us. In Matthew chapter 20, verse uh, 28, Jesus says, uh, Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. And he gave his life a ransom for many. We serve God by serving others, and this keeps us from serving self. Uh, on Sunday nights, we've been talking about evangelism. Mostly on, on Sunday nights, we have mostly our members here, and we've been talking about how are we going to go out there and proclaim the Word of God with boldness. And on Sunday mornings, we've been looking at how can we serve each other and how can we better ourselves as God's people. Today, let's look at some very important biblical truths to motivate us to service. We're going to look at four this morning. There's others. 
But let's look at these four today. First of all, God created us to be His workmanship. You know, many like to go to Ephesians chapter 2, and they just like to really look at verses 1 through 8. They don't put a lot of emphasis on verse 10. But look what it says in verse 10. It says, For we are His workmanship, created in Jesus Christ for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them, so that we will live in these good works. See, when you purchase a product, sometimes that particular product has uh, directions or it has operating instructions, doesn't it? And the manufacturer, the one who makes the product, he's going to give you these instructions on uh, the best way and how we are to operate that product. Well, we look at God. God created each and every one of us. And He did so in His way. How He desires each and every one of us to operate, so to speak. See, we were all made for godly service. Did you know that? Yes, we are created to serve Him. Everyone in God's eyes, when He says we are His workmanship, every single one of us here are His masterpiece. Think about that. You may not look at yourself that way. We don't go, walk around and say, I'm a masterpiece. Look at me. But to God, in His eyes, you are His masterpiece. We often do not see ourselves in Him as, as, as you know, really as anything. Sometimes we just feel like we just go through the emotions and, and we don't think that God could really use us. But God could use each and every one of us. If you allow Him to use you, He is going to use you. Keep saying, what can I do? When we look at the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and also Romans chapter 12, those two books on, in these chapters, uh, it likens members of the physical body, us, the church, as members of a physical body. See, we are all not the same. But we all have a function in the body, don't we? You think about the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 1 that God is the head of the body. He is the head of the church. And so we think about each and every one of us. I may not be a hand, but maybe I'm a leg. Maybe you're an eye, but someone else is an ear. See, we all have different functions. We, we all work together what the head instructs us to do. Sometimes we believe that we can serve and we can uh, satisfy self and find that inner peace and happiness when we do, but it doesn't work that way, does it? See, the, the key is getting out of self and getting in to serving others. It's to leave our own mind and to go serve those we can serve. We were created not to be served by God or any other person, but we are created to serve those out there, anybody, we serve each other in the church. When we leave the church, when we go to our homes, our neighbors, our friends, we are created to go and serve. Paul says we were created to do good works. And although this was re, um, had to do with the disciples in John chapter 15, it still applies to each and every one of us today. When we look at John chapter 15 and verse 8, it states, My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. See, the whole body is going to benefit when we are bearing fruit together. Think about that. What if this body here, we had five people bearing fruit, and the rest were just would come and go? How well would we be working as a, as a church? as a living organism, not too well. We all together as disciples of Christ. And he says, when you bear much fruit, this is proof of you being a disciple of Christ. You know, at Main Street Days, yesterday uh, we started at 9, um, our group, and we, we had a little extra that uh, in our group. Not, not, you know, it was Geraldine and then Tracy and I, that wrote our names, and then Jason was still there, and then Jason's kids came, and Holly and her kids came. Wayne was there. 
And so we had a big group, and it was just so nice seeing everybody. And, and you know, I wasn't there the rest of the day, so you probably had groups like that too working together. I think one group had three, and they just worked really hard assisting in the games, making popcorn, handing out popcorn, uh, giving candy to the kids who were playing the games, talking to people. We, we, I mean, so, someone told me, I think the, the Cleveland said that they talked to a lot of people, and then three, I think, said they're going to be coming. I mean, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. The conversations I had with some people, we may see them one day. You know, doing that together in these events and handing out flyers and inviting people. We're, we're serving. We're working together. It's a beautiful thing. But if we are not serving, not bearing fruit, then we are not operating in the way and God created us. You know, one day I was fishing with my buddy Keith and we, we uh, drove the boat into this cove and there was all these shad, and they were just moving around together. It, it was amazing, because I've never seen it before in my life. The, the water was so clear, and they just moved like in this, this huge shadow. Now, what if I was to take a net and grab a bunch of those and, and throw those fish? You know, they're gracefully moving, but once they get in that boat, what do they do? They just flop around. Why do they just flop around? Because they are out of their element. They are not in the element that God created them to be in. They're out of water. So let's ask ourselves this morning, are we going about like a fish out of water? Are we just flopping around in a boat? Are we going about doing what God has created us to do in His kingdom? Our intention is to serve Him. We have a great purpose in being God's workmanship. And I would like to say, we have a lot of workers here. But I'm not going to be happy until we're all working together. Until I look on those lists and I see people's names like, wow, look at all those names. I'm not putting anybody down here. Don't, don't, don't get the wrong impression by me saying that. Because I know a lot of people work very hard. They do a lot behind the scenes. And they also are very busy. Right? I, I, I get that. We're busy. There's some people who would love to be there, but they're not willing to, they, they can't physically be there. But they're here a lot. They're with us a lot. They encourage us a lot. They build us up a lot, don't they? Work. If you're able to work, work. You are His workmanship. Second in our service to God is to be extraordinary in an ordinary world. As we look back to the illustration, uh, Fred set himself apart from all these other poster, postal workers. And you would say, why? Because he went out of his way. Fred would go the extra mile where other ones were not willing to do. He created value in people. He made people feel good. Jesus stated in uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 41, whoever forces you to go one mile, go with him too. And we're going to be going into more depth in a, another lesson. I don't know if I'm going to preach that next week or in a couple weeks, but we're going to be going into more depth about going that extra mile. Having that extra effort, not, not just what you're, you're expected to do. You know, Mark Samber did not have to worry about his mail just stacking up there and then somebody seeing it and saying, oh, they're gone. They've been gone for a couple weeks. That they could maybe go in and, and break into his house. He didn't have to worry about the mail being uh, at, you know, in the elements. Fred said to this, uh, to, to, to Mark Sandberg, he says, well, why don't I just make this little makeshift mailbox? I'll put it on the back of your porch, I'll put it around the corner, I'll have a little slit I'll cut in it, and I'll put your mail in there. And then when you get home, you can grab your mail. If it gets too much, I will hold the mail, and I'll deliver it to you. Isn't that service? I mean, that is going beyond what, what the, the Postal Service expects of any of their mail carriers. And I know there's, a, there's many wonderful ma mail carriers that don't do that. Don't don't get me wrong, if you were one, then I'm sure you do great. But Fred just, Fred was amazing. You know, when I was young, I, I worked at a hotel 
I worked at the Holiday Inn in Walnut Creek, and they had a, a Lori's Diner, the restaurant, so I'd worked in that too. And I wasn't a server yet. I was, uh, um, I was a busboy. I would open up in the morning, put on, put you know, all these quarters and the jukebox on and listen to the 50s music, and then I would work. And then I also did room service from the restaurant. So I'd take calls. I'd go do room service. When they had banquets on the weekends, I would go do banquets, and I would help out serving banquets. And, you know, I just absolutely loved my job. To me, at 16 and a half years old, wherever I was, I was around 16, 16 and a half, it wasn't work to me, even though I had to get there at 6 in the morning. You know, I mean, if I wasn't working that job, I'd be sleeping in. If it wasn't a school day, I'd be sleeping in until 11 or 12 o'clock. But I loved to get up early. I loved to go out of my way. I loved to help others do their jobs to make it easier because it made me happy. You have a job, or have you had a job that just makes you happy, that you serve people? I think we, at times, we forget that, don't we? We forget about going the extra mile and serving others this way and to make them happy. But also, it makes us happy happy. I mean, I know we don't do those things for, for that very reason. I'm just going to go the extra mile because it makes me feel good. Because that, that wasn't what Fred is about. That's not, especially, that is not what Jesus is about. But isn't that what Jesus is telling us in Acts chapter 20, verse 35? He writes, in everything, I showed you that by working hard in this matter, you must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that He Himself says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Now, I realize when you're young, that's not the case. When you're five, when you're, when you're eight, ten, whatever, you, you, you love to receive, and that's okay. You're supposed to love to receive. I know that's how I was. I couldn't wait till Christmas. I couldn't wait until my birthday. But as you get older, we get more joy out of giving. We get more joy out of giving to others and serving others and, and going that extra mile and helping them. And why do we do that? Because it becomes more pleasurable than receiving. We're happier because we're doing what God intended us to do on how He created us. To serve, to give. To serve others and give to them, to help them and make them smile. Doesn't that make you smile? I know it makes me smile. You want to lighten the burden of others, what do you do? Help them. Go to them. Serve them. Knowing you have made an impact in someone's life, that makes you feel good. It makes you happy. I think it's easy to serve when people are looking, though, isn't it? When you think about it, I mean, naturally. But when you think about it, when you're at work, a lot of people at work, they're going to work hard and they're going to do all they can when the boss is right there and he's looking at them. And then a lot of times when that boss leaves, what happens? They get on the phone or text message or get on the phone and talk or they, they just slack off. Now, I'm not saying everybody does this, but a lot of people, when the boss is not looking, but us as Christians, we know the boss is always looking. He's always there. We can't fool him. He wants us to serve, and we need to serve every minute that we can in our lives. It's much harder to be a good servant and go the extra mile when nobody is looking because there's a part of us that wants to take credit, right? The part of us, we, we, we want to receive that recognition. But we are created to be God's workmanship. We are created to be extraordinary. We're only extraordinary in Christ Jesus. He's the one that makes us something. And I'm not boasting about me or you. I'm boasting about the Lord like Paul talked about. Number three, God wants us to be intentional when serving others. Be intentional in service helps us to be self-sacrificial, like Paul writes to the church 
at Philippi in chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. See, because when we serve willfully, when we have that intent to serve God, God is the one who's going to get the glory. We're not going to have the glory on us. See, it helps us to not be like those Pharisees that Matthew wrote about in Matthew chapter 6, who, who, who when they prayed, and when they gave, and when they fasted, they wanted to be seen by men. See, they, they wanted the recognition. I mean, it's nice to, ha- to have credit at times. It's nice to have someone say, hey, good job. But we shouldn't be working so we want to hear praise. There's too many people in this world that want the credit and they want to broadcast what they've done. I think we need to be careful on social media. I've seen people, I'm not not, not saying that these people are doing that in that way, but I I see that all the work they do and, and this and this and this, and I'm going, be careful with that, that you're not trying to get praise from other people. You can be proud, you can show your work, if it's benefiting others, and especially if it's benefiting the Lord, that's a great thing. There are many and many in the church and in this congregation that are doing service to God anonymously. They, they, they don't broadcast it. They don't tell Jennifer to send out an email and say, hey, I'm going to be doing this. Let everybody know. They're doing work behind the scenes. They're not trying to get the credit. They're not trying to expect anything. At at times, they they give other people the credit. What can we do? You think about it. Well, put a gift on somebody's door. Don't put your name on it. Send send them something in the mail. Send them a card. Send send them a a gift card. Write from a Christian brother or a Christian sister. Bake them something. Bake them cookies if you're a good baker. We have a lot of good bakers in this congregation. I'll be waiting for some cookies soon. I'm just kidding. You don't have to do that. I don't need that. Bake them a pie. Bake them a cake. Bake them cookies. Leave it on their door. Bring them lunch. Gift card for dinner. Say, I'm going to bring you dinner. What do you guys want? I mean, there's so many things that we could do. You could go help them with yard work. If they're having a hard time, they can't get out there. We know we have members that do that. But you find out what somebody else needs. And, and in the church here, yes, that's awesome, but you might have a neighbor that you, that you know. Go, go help them. Serve them. Ask them what you could do for them. You probably already do. And we got to remember the works that we have in this church signing our name to. Yeah, that's broadcasting. You're putting your name, but that's in a different way, isn't it? That's, that's all... A working together. And like Wayne mentioned, we, we had 2020 that we couldn't do much. We, I mean, at times I wanted to invite people over. I wanted to have something. I wanted to do something. I wanted to go somewhere. I'm like, oh, we can't do that right now. And that year's gone. We're in 2021. I'm not saying the virus isn't still out there. We can we, we be wise in what we do. There's all kinds of other things out there, flu bug. But now, the rest of this year, in 2022, that's coming. We have a lot that we could do to serve. At the end of this month, we have, we have on the 30th, we have the Fall Fest here. What a wonderful way that when people drive by and see that setting up, we, and we have flyers going out inviting neighbors and friends to bring their kids I mean, I mean, we had we did that two years ago. Was it three years ago? Here, it might have been three. We had a lot of people come in. I mean, we, sometimes you want more, don't you? You want more people to come in. But even if it's ten people, at least you have ten people from the community that you could talk to. That you could say, "We do this every year. We do this when we can. Bring your kids." I suggest we try to, you know. Not bum rush them to try to get get all their information. Like we're gonna email them a bunch of stuff or send them a bunch of stuff, but try to get their name and their information. Then we can say, hey, we want to invite you to this, or we want to invite you to this. We may already do that. I don't know. Jennifer probably does that already. But we have a lot of of works coming up. We have that, and like they mentioned, November six, November six. Be there. Be there on the thirtieth. 
Put your name down. Commit a couple hours. Commit 30 minutes. Whatever you can do to come down to serve and to help and to meet people. It's great to meet people in this community. All the people I meet, I'll, I'll say, I'm at the Church of Christ. Oh, you're that building down there, that new building. They still call it a new building. They did yesterday, even though we've been here a while now. But it's the newest one in, in, uh, in Ripon that's been built. And then I want to talk about that 2022 Life Challenge for a minute. Because I'm hoping, and we're going to keep talking about this, and I'm hoping that you're getting excited for it, because I'm very excited for this. I don't see how you cannot go through the life of Christ and study the life of Christ, and it's not going to encourage you. It's not going to build up your faith. It's not going to make you a better teacher, a better student, a better um, you know, servant of God. Because it's going to make us that way. It really will. If you put your heart into it, what's going to happen? Your heart's going to be like Christ, and it's going to be out there. It's going to be out there serving. Any time that we can learn and grow is a good thing. And I'm praying that each and every one of us here that knows about this challenge is going to take part in it. And like Wayne mentioned and Jack mentioned, don't worry about the money. If you can't buy the books, we're going to get those books for you. And I will even do studies with people on the side. Let's sit down and study. You're teaching a class. I, I can help you on, on that also if you want. And if you're not teaching a class, you never have before. It's a scary thing, isn't it? It's a commitment. But you're going to learn even from those younger ones too. Jump in there and teach a class. Teach a quarter. I guarantee when you serve and when you do that, they're going to be happy. It's going to make you joyful. There's also joy in knowing that God remembers our service and He's, and he's pleased when you work for Him, when you serve Him. We will never let God down when we are doing God's work, will we? You can't. How could you let God down when you're doing His will? When you're working to serve Him, God's going to be pleased with that. And we should be happy to be that. Uh, servants of God. John uh, Warren's a uh, really good brother and friend of mine wrote this, when going the extra mile for others, there's no need to keep a travel log. Just serve joyfully knowing it pleases the Lord. Amen to that. I close with these two scriptures. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10. It says, for, for God is not unjust, so as to forget your work and the love which you have shown toward His name. And having ministered and is still ministering to the saints. Amen. Look at Hebrews chapter 13, verse 16. And do not neglect doing good and sharing, for with such sacrifice God is pleased. God is pleased with your work. You know, if you if you ever uh, hear of an like when you not if you you do you hear an ambulance a fire truck go by we have that happen here a lot and they they turn down Jack Tone or they go to the right on Jack Tone and we hear that every day I'll be sitting in my uh, the dining area if I'm not in my office and whatever and I could hear that and sometimes I look out and right away I think about you know it's a good thing that we have our first responders but I think about the person that they're going to. And you probably do the same thing. And I pray. I bow my head and I pray. And I pray that they're going to be okay. They don't know I'm praying for them. I don't know what happened to them. But when we do that, when we pray for others also, God is pleased. That is a way to serve also without others knowing. Is going to God. Using that powerful prayer to God. Yes, when we label for the Lord... We know Jesus. We know Jesus is worthy of our work. He is worthy of our labor. We know that Jesus is the most honest, most fair boss that we could ever have. He's our Father. He's not a boss, really. He's our Father. I know some people like to uh, name Him other things. They like to say Daddy or whatever. I say He's my Father. He's our Father. Yeah, you may 
not like your boss at your job. Your boss may not be very nice to you. Your boss may be a hard taskmaster. Your, your boss may lie to you. He may not treat you fairly. But God, your Father, does. And when we work for Him, we know that He's pleased with that work. We know that work is going to n never, ever be in, in vain. It's never going to be useless. But Jesus says, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. And also 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Yes, 2020 may have kept us out of our homes, but it's past. So let's look forward and not look back. Let's look together and how we could together serve God. I know that 2021 is, is almost over. We've got three more months. Now it's two and a half more months, right? I just thought October started. It's already in the middle of October. And then we got 2022. It's going to be quite a year. And I look forward and I'm excited to serve God with you on ways in which we could glorify Him and, and, and build our faith together. Let's all be servants. Be happy that we could serve God and happy that we could make a difference in people's lives. And therefore, we will be happy also. We'll make a difference in our own lives. Let's be intentional and, and go about, be purposeful, and serve God. It keeps our minds on Him. It keeps our minds off of bad things, off of self, wanting to glorify self. So the challenge today is, from this lesson is really simple. Just go about this week, whatever day you want. And I'm not just saying this week and stop, but just go about this week and do something. Maybe something for somebody that you've never done before. Do something. And it, it could be something very simple and not cost you any money. Or, or something you haven't done in a long time and you just got busy and you got away from it. Do that for somebody. Serve somebody this week, and I guarantee you, it'll make you happy, and you're going to please God, and you're going to help somebody. That's, that's always a great thing. The lesson is yours this morning. I cannot wait to serve you, serve you, yes, and serve together and serve God. The rest of this year, next year, for as long as I breathe, as long as I'm here, I can't wait to serve and to bear fruit and to grow together spiritually. I hope you're excited also. If you need to respond to the invitation, if you are having a difficult time with whatever it may be in life, if you're hurting, if you need prayer, let's pray together to God. Let's go to God in prayer. If you ever need me during the week for whatever reason it may be, you want to talk, you have something that you want to look at. If I offended you, I, I, I do my best to never offend anybody, but maybe I do, I do with something, or you don't understand something. Come to me. Give me a call. If you need to study, study with me. Study with an elder, a deacon, another member. Strengthen our faith together. Serve one another. And if you have not been baptized into Christ, you are not a member of His body, the church. And God is calling you. He's calling you today to come to Him so that blood of Christ can take care of your sins, wash your sins away. If you need baptism, if you need prayer, come as we stand and we sing the invitation.